Welcome to Proverbs 31 by Design. My name is Tina Heisman. I help Christian women who are struggling with the overwhelm of trying to balance being a wife, mother, and career woman. When they work with me, they discover how to create their own unique level of balance so they can finally experience the joy, passion, success, and fulfillment they have been seeking in life. Our topic for today is how you can heal your past. But before we get started, I have a quick favor to ask. If you love my podcast, would you head on over to iTunes and rate it for me? That would mean so much to me. Thank you in advance. And now I have something for you. I have created a free download called The Ultimate Guide to Guilt-Free Self-Care. It's a guide to help you take care of yourself in mind, body, and spirit, so you can feel like your best self every day. Visit my website to download it, tinaheisman.com. I would also like to invite you to my private Proverbs 31 community on Facebook, where you can come to get positive inspiration for your life. Search Proverbs 31 by design in the Facebook search bar. Okay, let's dive in and talk about how you can heal your past. So we have all been through hard things in our lives, things that hurt us and left us feeling different than we were before they happened. And I think that's a given in life, right? That difficult things will happen to us. But the attitude that I have come to believe is that life is not about what happens to us, it's about how we handle what happens to us. So this concept is a step in the right direction if you're wanting to be free from some of your past pain. And also, as women of faith, we know that God can make good out of anything seemingly bad. Romans 8, 28, And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. So I just want to remind you of that in case you forgot about that. God can totally work good out of anything. But that doesn't mean that we just sit here and wait for it. It will require work of us to move forward and to create good out of something that was seemingly bad. Okay? So here is a truth that I would like to offer you. And this is really big. Are you ready? The truth is that your past is no longer hurting you. It can't hurt you. It is in the past. It already happened. It isn't here right now. You are in the present. I know that's a really big concept, so let me try to give you an example. If someone said something terrible to you in the past, like you are a bad friend, that is something that happened in the past, right? that person is not still standing in front of you saying that, right? That happened a while ago, and now you're in this present moment that's not still happening. So why does it still hurt, right? Why do we still hear the words in our mind? It's because we are thinking about it. It's not actually happening. We're just thinking about when it happened before. In fact, I would like to offer up the idea that the amount of time that we spend allowing thoughts like these to take up space in our brains, it's almost abusive to ourselves. It's hurtful and it is not helpful. Think about that. How is it serving you to continue to call to mind something terrible that someone once said to you? How is that helping you? It is not helping you. It is hurting you. It's like punishing you every time you remember it and making you feel shame and guilt. And here is another truth. That person who said that, they're not even the ones who are hurting you. You are hurting you by continuing to think about what they said to you. Does that make sense? Like, I hope it really does. And so... What happened to you in your past isn't what is hurting you now. It is your thoughts about your past that are causing you pain right now. And I have awesome news. The thoughts that you're thinking, 
that are causing you pain right now are purely optional. Now, you don't feel like they're optional, but I promise you they are. And I know the gravity of what I'm saying. (laughs) Today, I am going to teach you a technique for how to heal your past. This technique is not just a theory or wishful thinking or even just slapping some positivity on something hurtful. This technique is tried and true. It has been taught to me in one form or another in both of the life coaching schools that I have studied with. Plus, I use it on myself and my clients. It 100% works. The way that I'm going to teach it to you today is the way that almost exactly the life coach school teaches, and I love it. I think you're going to love it too. So before we jump into it, I do want to say that This technique is not a substitute for therapy if you have something abusive that you need to work through. Like if you still have something in your past that you need to work through, you would want to work with a therapist on that. This is a tool for moving forward. Like if you're tired of talking about something, if you're tired of feeling bad about it and it's holding you back, like you've done all the talking but you just need it to be better already, right? Okay, so this is how we do it. I was almost going to break into song, but I will spare you. Okay, step number one. I hope you have pen and paper. Step number one is to identify one event from your past that you would like to heal. So for example, the example that I will use for today is that my parents got divorced when I was 10. Okay, my mom left, I lived with my dad and my six-year-old brother and my two-year-old sister. So that's an event, an event from my past that I needed to heal at one point. I actually did this a long time ago, but this is a, a pretty good example. So that's my event. Step two. Step two is to write down the story that you tell about this event. So when you meet someone and you start telling them the story about what happened to you, this is the story you tell. So here's an example, the story that, that I used to tell about my event. My mom left my dad when I was 10. I felt abandoned, scared, and unsafe, and unlovable. This caused insecurity in me, and that insecurity eventually hurt my marriage. I had to become like a mom to my siblings until my dad got remarried. And I was never able to fully let that level of responsibility go. It caused me to become a control freak in my life and in my own marriage. The divorce robbed me of my childhood. I had to become like a little adult at the age of 10. And it caused me to stop having fun and being fun. And I still sometimes think I'm not fun. The pain from the divorce of my parents still haunts me today. Okay, friends, I could go on here, but I'm going to keep it short for the sake of our time together. But I think you get the point. Like, what is the story? What happened to you? Do you Did you have an illness or an injury or a relationship problem? What is that one of the stories from your past that you would love to heal? Write out the story. And with all of the judgment and negativity and hurt feelings and all of that, go ahead and get it out and make it a therapeutic exercise. You'll see it'll feel really good. And then we're going to move on to step three. Step three is to write down the actual facts from this event. Like what could be proven by witnesses? So there would be no opinions here. For example, facts from my story. My mom left my dad when I was 10. That is a fact. That could be proven by everyone who was there at the time. There are divorce papers to prove that, that it happened, right? And so that's, that's the facts. My mom left my dad. That's a fact. And what I want to point out to you is that's all the facts. Like all of the rest of the story I told you in step two were my thoughts and opinions about the event. They're my, my thoughts of what I thought happened to me because of it. They're not necessarily true, and they couldn't be proven in a court of law, right? Those are things that I made up in my mind about the story that happened to me, about the facts that happened. And so the reason that this step is in here is so that we can see the difference between the facts 
and the opinions or the thoughts that are in my in our minds. Because facts are something we can't control, right? We could not I could not control my parents getting divorced. But what we can control are our thoughts. Our thoughts are 100% in our control. And I'll show you what I mean by that. That's where we're going to move on to step four. Step four is write down the story that you want to tell about what this event means. The story where you are the hero. So for example, my hero story is this. I'm going to tell you that in a second, but I want to tell you that the reason we do this is because There's always good and bad in everything that happens. And so even though I felt there were bad things that happened out of my parents' divorce, when we just focus on that and don't take the time to mine for the good, then we only see the bad and we're stuck with that. And that's a choice. So let me tell you my hero story. My hero story is this. The divorce made me stronger wiser, more loving, more understanding, more compassionate, made me a leader, not afraid to take charge, and I think I'm an amazing mom. It gave me my stepmother and stepbrother and half-sister, and I would not trade those three people for anything in the world. And it probably actually helped me have a better relationship with my mother because we weren't living in the house, so we didn't have that normal teenage mother-daughter drama, right? (laughs) We were kind of spared from that. So that's my hero story. And so I hope you can see the difference between the story that I used to tell and the story that I now tell. In the first version, I am the victim of life happening to me. But in the second version, I am the hero. I took what happened to me and I looked for the positive and the blessings and then created my life from there. The difference is you can feel it when you do this for yourself. When you tell the victim story, you feel like crap and like you have no power in the world. But when you tell the story from the hero perspective, you feel amazing and empowered and like you can do anything in this world. And I think that's what God wants us to do too, you guys. Right? Like, does he want us sitting around saying, woe is me and our victim story? which we don't probably consciously do that, but when we keep using it as an excuse for where we're not showing up in our life or where we fall short in our life, then it really is causing us problems. And I think that God would have something to say about that. And so this technique and this theory can really help you move forward in your life and heal your past. But it's not necessarily a one and done process. You might need to repeat it for something big, to keep reminding yourself of the hero story. Keep reminding yourself the the hero story. Keep practicing your hero story and telling people your hero story and stop telling people the victim story, right? And so you will know if you need to repeat this process when you catch yourself telling yourself or someone else the old story, right? So practice telling the hero story and finding the hero story. Now I know this is easier said than done, and it definitely takes practice, and it really helps to have a third party help you find the good. I do this with my clients all the time, and it's so amazing and so healing. And I think I've told you guys this before, but they, I can tell like at the end of a call when they say, oh my gosh, I feel so much better. And it's not because of me, it's because of them and the work that they did and that they were open to mining for the good, right? So if you want to know about how coaching can help you heal your past, reach out to me for a complimentary discovery call and we'll talk about where you are and where you want to be and what it is that's holding you back and we'll come up with a plan, okay? And remember, I have created the ultimate guide to guilt-free self-care to help you feel like your best self every day. You'll find it on my website, tinaheisman.com. And don't forget to join the Proverbs 31 by Design community on Facebook. I'll see you next week.